Mega capital G is a man with a beard and I could use some of that hair for my receding hairline. But let's pour some maple syrup on my chest. Let's dive on into this video. He made a video saying that Yu-Gi-Oh is expensive. I asked him if I could make a response video to it and he put a heart on my comment. He gave me a kiss in his comment section. I will take that with pride, homie. <laughs> also, if you don't quote me in one of your future videos, I'm gonna sue you in small claims court in rally. I'm kidding, I'm joking, I'm just busting your chops, pimp. But Yu-Gi-Oh is not expensive. I'm here to make the hot take as to why. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Ow, I hit my nose. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AVRLR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1300 ladder. That took like seven takes, and I finally got it right on this take. Thank God. I need to quit drinking on the weekend because <laughs> we are. You just can't see the cup in the frame. But, ladies and gentlemen, hope you're having a fantastic day. Yu Gi Oh! is looking expensive AF right now. MBT Yu Gi Oh! The dude with the glasses and all that, and does like the 60 second videos on YouTube, TikTok, whatever it is he's doing these days. <laughs> he decided to go out and buy a Dia Bell Star Core. But in that Dia Bell Star Core included uh, Sky Crisis, which is about $15 to $20, and a copy of SP Little Knight, which at the time of his screenshot was like $110. And he's like, I hate this game. And is it to build Rescue Ace? Is it expensive? Yes, it is. And there were a lot of things that I agreed with Mega Capital G in his Yu-Gi-Oh! is expensive right now video, which you should definitely go and check out. Hopefully he'll see this video and reply to it um, because I would like to get his thoughts um, and of course all y'all's thoughts as well. But what's great about Yu-Gi-Oh! compared to a lot of other times in the game's history, keep in mind I've been playing since 2008, two weeks before the Fusion deck name got changed to the extra deck and I was getting my butthole stomped in by, yeah, $250 Dark Arm Dragons. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm still sore. It was awful. <laughs> but even though I was a kid back then and couldn't really afford the best decks and I kind of just played low tier trash, even though I can afford to spend like $500 on the best cards and, you know, $100 on thrusts and things like that, What's great about Yu-Gi-Oh, especially in this diverse format right now, and I feel like this is something that a lot of people overlook or possibly even forget, you have options available to you. You know, you don't have to play IP Masquerina with SP Little Knight. IP Masquerina into a Nightmare Unicorn, ditching a card and shuffling an opponent's card into the deck, and if it's co-linked, draw a card, that's still pretty good in 2023. Also, the Unicorn cannot be destroyed by card effects in the case of using it with IP Masquerina, or you just make an Underworld Goddess. That's not bad. Is it ideal in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now? Not necessarily, and that is the caveat to that. But is Yu-Gi-Oh! in a point right now where it's like, if you don't have Little Knight, you're losing? No. You could be playing Runic Stun and just not include SP Little Knight. Like, I tested, uh, almost called him Johnny Nguyen, but it's Asian Persuasion 2008. I've tested Asian Persuasion's Runic build without SP Little Knight. It's still very playable, and Runic is cheap AF, especially when you're just going with a stun build. You just throw in 15 of the Runic fusions, maybe you throw in a Gravity Controller because you don't want SP Little Knight, and you throw in a bunch of Floodgates and you proceed to whip out your diddly and play with yourself. Like, that's just how the deck functions. You know, you have these other options available to you, and I'm sure that people aren't going to be happy hearing that. I'm sure people are going to be telling me, Avery, you know, they're bumping up our rarities here in the TCG compared to the OCG. OCG, you're not guaranteed to even get a rare. You might get all commons. I understand that. Heck, I remember when Duelist Revolution came out, and Pot of Duality was a secret rare. In our version of Duelist Revolution in the TCG, in the OCG, it was a super rare. You know how much Pot of Duality was on release? $120, Sugar Boo Bear. Yeah, I remember that. And you know what happened to my dumbass? Ha <laughs> ha! Story time, pimp. I bought Pot of Dualities. And I, I did not buy Arch Lord Christians. I had Arch Lord Christians before they got reprinted. I bought Dualities. You know what got announced the next day? And I saw it on, and if you know who this is, you're a true OG, Senior Blanco 88's YouTube channel. And he made a quick, like, 30-second video and said, hey... Dualities are getting reprinted. Do you know how much money I lost? I think I was able to sell off my secret rare Christians and secret rare dualities all together for like a hundred bucks to a buddy of mine. I lost like $150 probably, or at least a hundred bucks. Maybe I broke even. I don't remember, but I remember selling all of it for like a hundred, 120 bucks. I lost so much money. I was 
pissed. I was beyond pissed. That was back when they did special editions and they would reprint cards as super rares. So like they would do the Duelist Revolution special edition. You got three packs and like one of two super rares that were a reprint from the set. I was beyond pissed. And so you you have these other options available to you because of where the game has progressed to. You know, the, the card pool is not so limited in good cards now to where you have to play those things. You know, will be will there be another type of triple tactics card in the future? Maybe. And it may become like $120, $150, whatever the case may be. But because of the fact that we don't have uh, set rotation in Yu-Gi-Oh, meaning, okay, you can only play the competitive advanced format using this set to this set, and whatever, you have all the cards available since the start of the game available to you. Again, you know, if you don't have SP Little Knight, you can play Unicorn with Masquerina. And there are other decks in general that you can play and still be competitive and see success. Again, we're in a diverse format. There's, I would argue, if you really pushed it, 30 decks that you could play right now and see success with. You know, Trap Tricks. Trap Tricks is a rank four Xyz toolbox deck with a couple of link monsters that are in-house links. I don't think people are really playing SP Little Knight and Trap Tricks. I'm no Trap Tricks expert, but like, do they really need Little Knight? Like, Little Knight's generic, sure, but like, do you really need it? Like, you're playing bottomless trap hole. Do you really need it? <laughs> like, I don't think you do. Eldelich, does Eldelich need SP Little Knight? No. Do you need a Dia Bell Star Cord? No, absolutely not. Like, you have all these things available to you. Play Flunder without Thrust. Like, is that necessarily really good? No, but it depends on the level of the event that you're going to, I feel. If you're going to, like, I don't know, a YCS or Nats, you're going to want to break the bank to get the best cards because that's the only way you're going to do well, period, end of story. If you're going to an OTS championship, I almost got my invite to Nats at my OTS championship back when I was playing Cash Tira Adventure like a year ago now, I think. Because it's an OTS championship, a lot of different things can do well. You know, you can pants people with Goaty and just get your invite. Like, it happens. Um, you know, Sprite purely, pants people and get your invite. So you have these options available to you. When I got my uh, invite with Sprite purely months ago, I didn't play Talents. I didn't play Thrust. You didn't need it. You ran a purely core, you ran a sprite core, and it worked out because people were crapping all over the floor because they didn't know what my deck did. Um, again, though, to play devil's advocate, will you be better off if you have those cards? Yes. Um, this is why I'm always an advocate for getting cards early when they're low because they do have the potential to go up. Like we saw with SP Little Knight, granted it was still expensive, Pre-sales are around the 70 to 80 buck range. Now, after release, it's over $100. That doesn't happen often. Usually, pre-sales are the high point, and then they dip down. Like, God, I remember when Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer came out, and it was like $150 on pre-sale. You know where it was after? I think it was like 60 bucks tops. That's when we still had Verte and Anaconda. So that goes to show how much of a dip prices can go. And it's important to keep in mind, too, just format-wise in general, we've only had one YCS in this format. We saw a lot of Rescue Ace. A lot of people were thinking that Tier Element was going to be one of the best decks in the room. And I believe it's, excuse me, I believe it still is. The next YCS we have is this weekend, actually going on right now, I think, in Bolivia. Now, South American YCSs tend to be a bit smaller. So if you prefer to look at American results, then the next YCS we have is like November 4th through 6th. That will be the next one. Age of Overlord will have been out for a while. We would have just gotten Rarity Collection. Things are going to be a bit more solidified. People may know how to beat Rescue Ace easier. That could also adjust prices. We may see more Tier Element do well. We may see, I don't know, more Flunder do well. I'm pulling just random decks out of my asshole here. <laughs> but you will see these other tech cards and different decks kind of shift and move in the format. Like, do I think Bysteel Horus is going to do well at the next North American YCS? No, no. I think that YCS Indy was the show out point for a lot of different decks. I don't think Johnny Nguyen is going to do well with his Runic Stun deck at the next YCS he goes to. I'm just, I don't think it's going to happen. I think people are going to be better prepared for it. I think that people were just all raring to go to play whatever meta deck they win against. And Johnny Nguyen just shows up just whipping it out and playing with it. And it's just like, I'm playing a stun deck with, you know, floodgates and you can't do nothing, Sugar Boo Bear. You know, like it happens. So you, at the end of the day, you have these options available to you. 
put yourself on a budget to where, you know, you can save 10, 20 bucks a week, whatever the case may be, to where you can get these cards. Or if you just prefer not to spend that money, uh, just play different cards, play Unicorn with Mascarena. Or if it really pisses you off enough, which I don't advocate for this, but you could always take a break from the game until things get cheaper. But I feel like now is a great time to really get into the game because you have options available to you. You have cheaper alternatives. Like people will always ask me, especially my friends that just play Yu-Gi-Oh! casually, hey, is right now a good time to buy cards? And I'm, I'm like, you know, right now, I'm like, yeah, because there are so many things getting reprinted in Rarity Collection. You have all these different decks that you can play. It's, it's a good time. So yes, cards are expensive. Do you have to get those cards? No. If we were in a tier zero format and you had to spend $500 on the tier zero deck, yeah, it would be a whole different story. But thank God that we have options available to us. Should the cards be $500? No. Should we be getting rarity upgrades compared to the OCG? No. But again, you have options and thank God we do because if we had set rotation to where you couldn't play Unicorn anymore and if you wanted some sort of interruption during the opponent's turn, you had to play Little Knight, that card would be $300 easily overnight. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Am I off kilter here? Is, is there something I'm missing? I really think that, you know, with us being in a diverse format, having options is always good. And so I, I really don't think you need Little Knight. With that being said, I pulled three out of my case. Buying cases is very helpful too in this regard, but not everybody has the money for that. And of course, my dad was the one that pulled two of the Little Knights and I pulled one and he pulled like three quarter centuries. Go figure. <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to go check out that live stream if you want. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.